We have a good friend of mine who I used to work with in the mid-1990s at WHK Radio. He is the host of Locked on Lions in Detroit. He is Matt Derry. Hey. Thank you. I love Matt Derry. I love to see you guys. Thanks for having me. Let me make a statement before we start. Okay. When you listen. No, this is going to be good, Dan. When you when you listen to these national shows now and you listen to some of these local shows and you hear drops, all right, on the air, people playing funny sound bites, clips, whatever, Dan McDowell is the one that invented that, all right? I'm being dead serious. And people are going, oh, oh, no, WFA, no, 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 no. 1995, WHK, may have been 94, WHK in Cleveland, that, that Dan started all of that. So bow down, people. So like you know, he he doesn't he doesn't let me forget that I need to bow down. That's right. <laughs> Every day. Jake, do you uh, know that? Jake, have you heard this before? I have not heard that specifically, but certainly without, you know, being lame here, I've I've I'm very aware of his uh, innovative approach to the medium. Gotcha. You know? we and, had, and, and you know, I don't know if you know about Air Force One. <laughs> No, he doesn't know. That preceded my (laughs) Cleveland days when I was trying my hand at a comedy network, uh, Matt. Uh, No, but actually, these guys met um, Les Levine because we did. What a dude. Well, we did a show up in Cleveland once. I don't know why we did that. Were the Cowboys going Same trip. Yeah, we were there for uh, Cowboys, Browns. We were at your brother's bar. Okay. We met Les. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, Cleveland can be a good time for a short time. If you're there for a short, short period, I smoked cigarettes with some people that I think you like went to high school with or something in the back alley. <laughs> the list grows. Man. I know. Yeah. No, it was, it was a cigarette era for me. Yeah. So when I was at WHK, I, I produced a show. I ran the board. I hosted a weekend show. I did a lot of different stuff. I can't remember exactly what you did, Matt. I just remember dicking around with you all the time. Like, oh, remember, it was June of 95. Uh, I read. I graduated Syracuse. I got started at HK because uh, Les told Pat to hire me. And then I started with you on McDowell in the morning. Me, you, and Richard Friedman. Come on. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I did did do some pot. hosting as well. And and some pot. Ugh. We might have done pot. No. I, don't know. <laughs> I just know <laughs> that. Pat might not have, but uh, and he I, might not have known I was uh <laughs> I, <don't laughs> it, it, I, I couldn't have passed a drug test back then. So that's where you today today, I'm fine. Yeah. So that's where you and AJ Agresta used to go to when you were going in the hallway. Okay. Now I get it. Uh, You never know. (laughs) (laughs) You never know. Uh, Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm happy we can have like an excuse to talk. Yeah. And uh, finding out that you do host locked on lines is awesome because I have a pretty close connection with uh, your head coach. Really? Like we did a weekly show with him for a couple of years on the ticket, and uh, he's awesome. He was on with us uh, a little when he first got hired. Yeah, was he on with us? Yeah. Um. So yeah, he's. I think he's incredible. I'm just wondering. Let's even start back to when he first got there. Like, what are you thinking when that opening press conference happens, and he's talking remember, about biting kneecaps? Yeah, I mean, it was during COVID, so nobody could actually be there. So he's talking, basically, he had a press conference and a podium and all of that in Allen Park where the Lions facility is, but he was talking to screens and you and Zoom like like you and I, we, we are doing right now. And uh, I thought he did well, actually, but a lot of people nationally really condemned it and said he was uh, way too cliche, kneecap biting. This is this is a gimmick. This isn't going to work. Can he, can he X and O? I mean, this sounds like some something out of a movie. I thought it was good. Uh, I questioned him certainly probably year two when the Lions started one and six. I basically said on my podcast, if this team loses the next two, I'm done. I'm going to quit. And it was more of a bit than anything else. And then they went on this run. They ended up obviously going nine and eight last year, but he's done a fantastic job. And I've never seen a team as close as this team is. Any of the teams I'm covered, covered going back to Cleveland, my Syracuse days, anything. Uh, they are They are on one string with him general manager, Brad Holmes. And I think they can go into San Francisco and win just because they're so together. Now they're also got some talent now and he's done a great job and he's really, he's taken his assistant coaches and he's, he, he's empowered them. They, he's got a good staff. He's got 
two assistants in Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn that are both be head coaches. Probably a third in, in Hank Fraley, their old line coach, who's a monster. He's great. So I think he's done great. He, he deserves all the flowers he's getting. I think it's really cool, too, and this is something we haven't really experienced here, although maybe Jason Garrett would count uh, in this regard on the opposite side, but I think it's really cool because Dan Campbell, despite not being from the area, feels very Detroit to me in the same way that Mike Tomlin always felt very Pittsburgh to me. And perhaps uh, the flip yep. side is Jason Garrett was um, uh, boring and had no substance, which is kind of like how Dallas is. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jake, so, I, I think Dan Campbell personifies Detroit for sure. Tough guy, uh, you know, brings the lunch pail, all of that. And Lion fans have had to go through some real buffoons as coaches here. I mean, Jim Schwartz was fine. But, you know, Wayne Fonts, uh, Schwartz, uh, Matt Patricia before Campbell was an utter disaster. I mean, I've been doing this pod since 2016, and I had people telling me on the street, people I, I didn't know, hey, I used to listen to your show. I stopped. I, I can't follow the Lions anymore. I despise Patricia. I hate our GM, Bob Quinn. I'm done. And now everybody's back. The bandwagon's filled back up. But they they love the team. The team's really good, but they love I – mean, Dan Campbell is the most popular sports figure in Detroit. Miguel Cabrera was for a time, and there were some others, and Miggy just retired. But it's Campbell by, I mean, a long shot, by a landslide. He's just, he's he's superb, and, and they're winning. I mean, they've won 14 games here. I mean, that's unheard of here. It is unheard of, man. And they knocked the Cowboys off that list. Or no, no, excuse me, they're off the list. Yeah, it's just. They've, uh, they've knocked the Cowboys up the, uh, America's haven't been team. to an, NFC championship <laughs> no, since. Let's not get ahead of ourselves <laughs> here. Matt, but... Well, no, that, I, I thought that's what Dan was saying um, because people are, are calling them America's team now, the Lions, and it's it's a little crazy. I don't know if they're reaching Cowboy status because if you watch those national shows, that you know they all have Dallas every day. They got to talk about something, Dak or McCarthy or whatever. But yeah, I mean the Lions have uh, made it to the NC NFC championship game first time in 32 years. So people are like, oh, what's going on there? I'm like, I don't think anybody knows how to act. This hadn't happened since 91. They had won two playoff games in the same year since 1957. So no one knows what to do. It's wild. And I, I do think that the general public is probably, and I think I might have even seen a poll, like a nationwide, like what states are you know yeah. supporting who. And I, it is overwhelmingly Detroit. No, Jake, it is. I mean, like everybody's seen the Ravens song and dance before. Mahomes is a bit of an old bit in Kansas City, although the the, the Kelsey and, and Taylor stuff is semi fresh. And then, obviously, uh, uh, we've seen the Niners now in this game for the last five years. So the Lions are the new hotness. They definitely are easy to root for. Guys like St. Brown, Jared Goff, uh, Hutchinson's cool, Dan Campbell. So it's a it's a real likable team. How often we've seen it? I think, but like Jake was predicting, he would do it after the last game. He didn't. But how often does he like cry? It feels like he's very emotional. Uh, he's held it back a little bit better this year. Remember last year against Minnesota, they lost on the road, a really bad loss to the Vikings where they had it. They thought they were going to win it. And he just, and he lost it on the podium. He was so proud of his team and he was mad at himself for some decisions that he made. And he got emotional. And that's when everybody was, I think they were like one and four, one and five at the time. And everybody's like, give me a break. He's crying after losses. He won't last. He's been lionized just like every other coach and he's held it back. He's held it together pretty well. He's, he is emotional. He talks about Sheila Hamp, the team's owner, uh, Rod Wood, the president. They're, they're all real close. Chris Spielman, who they was the, really the first hire of Sheila and Rod on the football side to kind of help hire Brad and Dan. Um, it's pretty cool though. It's, it's, it's genuine. It's not some BS uh, routine. He really, he really is who he is. I mean, this is as real as it gets. I think that being mad at himself for decisions that he made, that's a big deal too. Cause some coaches won't take any, uh, you know, responsibility on their own. And yeah, we know a little something about that. I feel like that goes <laughs> a long way with the players. No question. No, he's done it a bunch of times. I mean, uh, even this past Sunday, um, when they played Tampa, they, 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 they butchered the clock at the end just by taking knees and Todd Bowles didn't call timeout, which would have forced a fourth down. And Campbell was asked about it on Monday and was like, yeah, I totally messed that up. We should have run the clock down to one each time on the play clock and been a little bit more, you know, uh, uh, close on it and uh, and clear, and we weren't. But he always seems to own it. And again, Patricia before him was such a GD disaster that this is so refreshing to have somebody that come out and said, yeah, I coached a bad game or I screwed that up or 
Uh, he ran a fake punt in Chicago at his own 30. It was a, a bad call. And he said right after the game, horrible decision. That's, that is refreshing. And I, I really wanted it for for Stafford in Detroit, just being like a local guy. He was a big listener to uh, our previous radio station. But <clears throat> along the lines of Dan Campbell fitting in Detroit, there's something about a guy who another team didn't want, discarded. Immediately, that team wins a Super Bowl <laughs> as soon as they get rid of you and Jared Goff succeeding at this stage of his career. And like you watch the hard knocks, he just seems like a guy who's really – a lot more likable than I think I knew. And it seems like he's really embraced the city. No, he has. And uh, what's nice too is like his fiance is super cool and stays out of the way. Obviously Stafford's wife is <laughs> <laughs> the, the total opposite. She, I mean, so the, Ram, the Rams came to town and she did like a live podcast with her broadcast partner and good friend, Hank Winchester. And they were like in a bar in Royal Oak. I mean, it was just, it was a complete circus. Um, Christian Harper, Goff's fiance, no one would know who she is. She really stays out of the way. And Jared, for the most part, doesn't like the attention. Does have a chip on his shoulder, though. He gets a little snippy sometimes with the media about questions because he's such a team guy that he defends his teammates, defends himself. Uh, you know, you're right. McVay just discarded him and openly admitted uh, during the week of the playoff game two weeks ago that he probably didn't handle it all that well and wasn't all that cool about it and felt bad about it. And Goff appreciated that. But Goff, you're right, it's kind of that Cinderella Detroit story, too, where Rams discarded him. They immediately won a Super Bowl with the Lions quarterback. But now Goff is a, a win away from getting to another Super Bowl. That's pretty darn good, and he's going to get paid. I mean, his contract's up after next year. He's owed $25 million ne next season, which and Dan knows, being you know, an old Browns fan, I mean, Deshaun Watson's getting $40 million. The guy's terrible. So, like, here's Goff. That's a bargain at $25 million for next year. Did you write down Christian Harper? That's the uh, they already, they oh, are. they've already <laughs> searched. Yeah, we're at a house. Lake, right? Lake's, Lake's all over that. I see. That. Uh, <laughs> I knew who she was. Yep. Oh, we're, you already knew. Uh, yeah, she's quite attractive. So, wait, <laughs> NFL quarterback you as an attractive lady. Say. Yeah, <laughs> that is so weird. Yeah, uh, okay. Yes, I can now confirm that. Uh, yep. yeah, yep. she's yep. she's fantastic. very attractive. Yep. Um, that's an old photo of her. Jeez, boy. <laughs> so uh on back to the staffords for a second why is it that matt Derry condones booing matt stafford's kids that is not true i did not oh my that. gosh when did i say what oh, all right yeah, I, all right i'll play a I'm reading a lot about you and uh yeah, what i understand yeah. that you led the charge i did not there you had your i shirt was off. there i was actually, <laughs> actually in the building i don't go to a lot of the games i was at the rams game i he was getting booed she got booed a little when she brought her kids out onto the <laughs> sidelines before the game. But come on now. I was surprised. People were like, why didn't they do a video for Stafford? They'll do one next year. He's coming to town during the regular season. They'll do all the tribute BS next year. But this was a playoff game. It was the first one at home in 32 years or 30 years, 93 they lost. But, like, this was not the time to do it. So, and she just... She loves getting clicks, man. She's good at it. <laughs> she does. We're in that world now, too. So we 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 endorse that. <laughs> I'll boo. I'll boo a kid, no problem. Yeah, is that going to get us clicks? We'll do it. Hey, um, that's why we had Matt on. We thought he'd just boo our kids. <laughs> <laughs> I know how everyone in Detroit is. That's right. Uh, back to Dan Campbell too for a second. It just seems he's an interesting mold. Um, because now you always have to hire the hot coordinator, the, uh, the, the offensive, the genius, the guru, the, the quarterback whisperer, like he was none of that. No, he just, he's the old, uh, do they say it's the CEO head coach, the guy who just, he's in charge of everything. He's just roaming the sidelines the and walk around. Yeah. He's, he's the guy that he, he's just the boss. He's a, you know, and I'll use another cliche, Danny, he's a player's coach. He really is like, he's the ultimate, he's a former player. He goes before practice every day and taps every guy when they're stretching on the head or shoulder or wherever. And just, you know, says, Hey, I mean, he's just that kind of guy. And you're right. All of these guys, the, the, the Shanahan and Lafleur, McVay tree and all of that, the, I'm not saying they're nerds, but just, you know, the skinny offensive guru guy, Ben Johnson, the Lions offensive coordinator is going to be a head coach. I think he's getting the Washington job. Those guys are all in that mold. And here's this hulking 6'6", former tight end who's still in great shape that just looks like, you know, the the, the high school linebacker coach. And uh, he's been awesome. And you're right, he's not from that mold. But again, he lets Aaron Glenn run the defense. He lets Ben Johnson run the offense. 
and um, he's not standing there with a play sheet in front of him like Stefanski or any of these guys. He's just uh, a leader of men and has made really good decisions the last few weeks, and and they've won both games. Yeah, the two other things I think about him are, <clears throat> one, I, I really, as a, a, a fervent supporter of more aggression based on analytics and football, I think it's really cool that a guy who everyone thinks is old school is the guy who is embracing these new ways of approaching football more than like it it almost doesn't work when it's some nerd because everyone's like ah look this guy thinks he's smarter than everyone but if it's a guy that everybody knows can kick your ass and he's like i'll go for two i'll fourth down f it whatever i think it i think it goes i think that helps a lot and then the other thing is um and dan definitely knows this knows dan more way more personally than i do but my brother worked for the saints whenever he was there and just said like dude he's just that cool to everybody like from the cafeteria worker to the owner, like he just is an extremely normal dude. So I don't know. He's very easy to root for. Very easy. Oh, he does. It, it is. It is, and he, he resonates with everybody, like you said. And uh, look, I mean, he got off to a ro- rocky start, three thirteen and one the first year. They didn't have a lot of talent, but he said it. We're gonna win. We're gonna turn this around. It's gonna take a little bit of time. The drafting. The general manager Brad Holmes has been great. And if you're watching these videos. Lions put out in the draft rooms the last few years. It's a collaboration. It's Brad Holmes. It's Dan. It's Chris Spielman. It's it's Mike Disner. It's John Dorsey, Ray Agnew. They've got a really good front office. They all like each other and work together. And hey, collaboration works in 2024. Uh, it's a different time than just this is the GM. He stays in his lane. This is the coach. And the Lions are uh, Lions are doing something that hasn't been done in this town in a long time. So we'll see what uh, happens. I mean, they're one win away from the Super Bowl. And they've never been there before. So. Pretty cool. What did you think of when he kept going for two versus the Cowboys? I had no issue with it. I, I thought it was aggressive. And him, I know after the penalty, uh, and first of all, they got screwed. Let's just. They I mean, did. That was ridiculous. They, they did. And so then there was the penalty. So they're back at the nine. The amount of times that golf has found St. Brown or Reynolds in the end zone or Laporta, uh, I had no issue with it uh, at all. Then the penalty, of course. Uh, on Parsons, so then they're back at the four, and it was the right call. Golf made a bad throw to Mitchell. That, that's a, that's probably a two pointer and a conversion if it's a good throw. So I had no problem with that one at all. Uh, was Hard Knocks this year? Last year. Last, Last year. year. Yeah. It was this year. I can't remember that. Anyway, Jets and then midseason. Oh, that's right. A Rod was Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess that's where a lot of people love him from as well. That was awesome. Him it was. It was. It was all real. I mean, even the Jamal Williams stuff, you know, he was, I mean, all of that was, that's all, all these guys are. I mean, it really was, there was no show. I mean, that's how Campbell talks. That's how, you know, Deuce Staley, when he was here and Aaron Glenn kind of went back and forth in practice. All of that was pretty good. They wanted the Lions. The NFL begged the Lions to do it again. They wanted them again this year. And the Lions were like, no, that that one, one, one time was good. Plus the Lions had wanted the draft. So they agreed to do hard knocks last year. They get the draft this coming year. So it was kind of a give and take there. And, a good, and it was, and it worked. It was great. It, it was great. Previous regime, Quinn and Patricia turned it down numerous times, but this group was good with it. And uh, but they didn't want to do it a second time. Patricia under the, the Belichick tree, right? So Belichick, that, yeah, he, he don't want to do that. No. Yeah. That's when America fell in love with uh, Dan Campbell and Aiden Hutchinson's family. Oh yeah. They're all hot. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, they're all they're about. all the games. They're all the games. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um <laughs> earlier today on our program, we were talking about a Detroit news story. I'm gonna call him Raccoon Man. Did you see this story? No. It's, it's old. Like, oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. I thought it was like this week it came out. No, it was okay. a guy a guy who lives in Detroit. And he, uh, and he hunts, us to... hunts raccoon. Yeah, okay. that's that's actually not what he calls himself. But Dan is afraid of being canceled. <laughs> well, he, he has a uh, you know so it's a certain skin cap, and, and yes, that's the word that he will use. And right. uh, yeah. and he's allowed to to say it. I, I'm not. That's right. that's all. Gotcha. Anyway, because gotcha. he's raccoon man. All right, I just wanted to check your always, temperature. If always you're, something going on here in Detroit. Any Did you guys did you guys ever follow our former mayor here, Kwame Kilpatrick? Do you ever hear? Oh my gosh, he, oh, lived, yeah, he lived in South Lake. He lived in where I live. That's right. For some reason, he came down here to. I guess 
if you want to escape the law, you, you go to Texas. That's right. right. That's right. Well, he was obviously pardoned and uh, sent out of jail by the previous president. And then uh, now the, 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 a lot of reports are servicing here in Detroit that he's driving around in a $90,000 car. His wife, new wife, put in for a $900,000 house, but he still owes Detroit 1.6 mil. Come on, come on, Kwame. Yeah. Pay well. your bill, buddy. <laughs> um, and then I just wanted to ask you, Unless there's any other hot topics that we need to know uh, heading into this game, what's what's well, the? Do you, uh, I mean, do you guys word? think the Lions have a chance? Like, I mean, you got do they still hate the Niners down in Dallas? That was a rivalry for a long time. Well, you know, getting housed two years in a row in the playoffs, <laughs> the last two years before this one didn't uh, didn't didn't hurt the rivalry. I think they yeah. hate the Cowboys more than they hate the Niners these days. Yeah, that's the I thing. Bet. We're so apathetic that. It's hard to get mad at anybody else except for the Eagles. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, man, I guess that's a bittersweet thing, right? That Philly was just—I mean, what a nosedive. I mean, you know, I know obviously Dallas choked, but that Philly—that Philly nosedive, that nosedive was probably worse. It's the only thing that provided me any solace. Oh my gosh! Yeah, this is crazy. Love it. Plus, who are they more? Who are they more mad at down there, Dak or McCarthy or Jerry? See, we were talking about this earlier. The weird thing down here is everyone is so mad at everyone that they don't even stop to say, like, who am I more mad at? You know, it's like, yeah. I hate the coach. I hate the owner and GM. The quarterback needs to go um, on down the line. Yeah, it's just everybody's fault, which have you can't guys, really be true. But have you guys had that fan on that was uh, heckling Luca the other night? <laughs> <laughs> That's not no, a we should be booking. We him. should be booking. Him. That yeah, is a we great idea. Thought about that. Son's fan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, screw them. Oh my gosh. What <laughs> yeah. a homer. We're we're journalists, Blake. Uh we can't be homers. I just want to ask you, Matt, can you yeah. believe that we were in Cleveland working together and we probably were both at Belichick Prescott, like the greatest coach in NFL history. I know. Was there and uh all we did was argue about should we fire him or not today or tomorrow. That was the whole thing with the uh, the Belichick. I mean it probably was 60% of our content back then because sure. obviously you worked very closely with Pat McCabe, who was a Belichick stan. I mean, he was just such a Bill Homer. Yeah. And the rest of the station was basically Bill must go. Riz was kind of just on the fence, but like. It seems the whole it, city was Bill must go. Right. Remember that audio we played? I mean, it would, you know. Tony Rizzo, who, who was covering the team at the time and was on our station, was like took a tape recorder and was taping those fans in the, that were waiting outside the press conference. Like the old days at the stadium, there was no barricades. I mean, and Bill would walk through and just the booing. They, he was hated <laughs> so much there. And uh, you're right to then become the greatest of all time. It, you're right. It was great. You never would have thought that in a million years back then. No way. It makes me sad. It's very Cleveland. It's very Total. Cleveland, and very Cleveland for them to say no, no. But he had to go. Like there's, they won't admit that they made a mistake. Right. It's just like, yeah, no, that's, that's, you, you got to fit into Cleveland. Yeah. We were there that day that the, that uncle already left. Like the, t the team just was gone. It was the most unbelievable thing ever. People always say, oh, if you're going to be on the radio or do your podcast or whatever, and the Lions go to the Super Bowl, I'm going to, I always tell people I was there in Cleveland when the Browns left. It was insane. Insane. Yeah. The, we didn't the have to crack open a microphone and the lines would light up. Or the first year I was here, we had the big dog on to pick games every Friday. <laughs> he, he forgot about that. Remember, remember, that, remember that rejoin we had? It was like, it's the big dog from the dog pound. And when you're not barking, when I'm not barking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I could probably find that. Um, and then the thing I've always, I've told you this before, Jake, I think, but my biggest memory from being at Brown's press conferences, you remember the, the Brown's color commentator. He would always, the old guy. His name was Doug Deacon. He was an yeah. old Browns lineman. Yes. And he covered the team and he would be at every press conference. He would have an unlit cigar in his mouth and a big chew. <laughs> yeah. At the like, same time. Diversify right. At the very a same bit. time. Yeah. He'd be spitting oh, yeah. in a cup. And and oh, yeah. uh, I just thought, there's a guy. That's my hero. That's yeah, a hero that of mine. Looks, yeah. I grew up as my hero and, and he's still my hero. Well, Matt, before we let you go, um, after Dan does his pleasantries, I want you to Google uh, Detroit Lions parking lot dead spin after we get yeah, off. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> he knows. <laughs> of course I know. That was years ago. I didn't, know, I didn't know how popular it was. That was years yeah. ago. That we have sex ago. in the parking lot? What do we have? Uh, uh, very unconventional. Yeah. <laughs> unconventional sex in the – this yeah. kind of like the uh, – This and that. 
Oh, okay. Wow. Over, over a car. Oh, kind of a, right. uh, yeah. Like, uh, that, was like, that was almost 10 years ago, I think. Yeah, but I don't forget. Uh, <laughs> we got a human centipede uh, type situation here. You might be looking at something similar to that outside of Ford Field in the broad daylight, the day yeah, of a yeah. game. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't after uh, daylight savings at uh, oh. 5, 5 <laughs> it, was, uh, it was all, it was there. Oh, yeah. We might see more of that, Jake. If the Lions, win, if the Lions win this weekend, people still start flocking downtown because they don't know what to do with themselves and run down Woodward Avenue. Then we might see more of that. Oh <laughs> man, that's great! <laughs> all right, Matt. Well, thanks. I know uh, you got a busy schedule nowadays with uh, with all you're doing. So uh, thanks it's a lot. Great. All good. Great to see you guys, Dan. I love you. Uh, happy for your success. I love that I would read all all these national public Barrett Sports Media and it's like Dan McDowell's. Uh, Jan, Dan, and Jake—they're—they're—they're they're, they're, going to fight. I loved it. I, I loved it. I was following it. I was supporting you, and uh, I think what you guys are doing is uh, groundbreaking. If, uh, you guys will do great. I know you will. I appreciate it, man. Can All I right, borrow, I can wasn't. I, can I borrow some money? Until you said that, I wasn't going to say this, but now I'll say: go subscribe to Lockdown yeah, Lions. Yeah, there you go. That's right. Oh, thank you. And, uh, follow Matt Derry on Twitter, and uh, it's the great Matt Derry. All right. Thank you, fellas. Great to see you. See you, brother. Thanks, man.